Dear students, today we shall understand how the set notation is used in economics and what actually it means. So let's get started. Firstly, we should know what set notation is. It's basically a composition of certain objects. These can be the numbers, individuals, countries, firms. So you see, it's a collection of certain members and they are written in a specific way. We shall see how we write them. The examples, there, there are so many examples around us. For example, all these numbers, the labor and the firms, the countries, banks, you know, these can also, all of these can be written in the form of sets. Now, these members, they are specifically called as elements of the set. These numbers, these labor, etc., all of these are put into a certain jargon which is known as elements of a set. Now, we should come to the ways in which we can write the sets. The first one is known as enumeration and the other one is known as description. Let's try to understand them one by one. Firstly, let's take an example for the case of enumeration method of writing a set. As you can see in this example, we are using an alphabet. So sets are represented using some alphabet. And we chose B, maybe, to represent the banks. We can use any alphabet. We can start with A or we can use B, C, D. It's, it's no carving in the stone. Hum apni marzi ka koi bhi letter alphabet chun sakte. Now, B is equal to, you know, this bank and that bank. There is a, a certain number of banks included in them. But there is something in common. Uh, and that thing which is common among all these banks is that they are foreign banks and they are operating in Pakistan. So when I have completed writing their list, I have closed the bracket uh, and the bracket is a curly bracket. So this is uh, a certain manner in which we have to write a set. And I have separated these with the help of comma. So actually what I have tried is to make a list and this list is making the set of the foreign banks operating in Pakistan. This is the enumeration method in which we actually mention the elements explicitly. They may be firms, banks, individuals, numbers, etc. Now the other type is the description method of writing a set. Taking the same example, we can write it in this way. Let's consider this way, which is there. B is equal to a set. And it's a set, it's a set because we can see those curly brackets. However, there are some symbols in, inside this, uh, these brackets. And um, it's X and then there's a pipe, you know, it's a vertical line. And X, a foreign bank in Pakistan. The question is how we read it. We need to understand how we read it. So let's see. It is read as... B is the set of all banks in Pakistan. X, right? Such that X is a foreign bank in Pakistan. So out of the banks that operate in Pakistan, we are talking about the foreign banks only. So in this way, we can read it and we can understand what it is trying to explain. One thing that you might observe is that there is no explicit list of the members. So this is perhaps a disadvantage of this type, that we don't have any explicit list of the elements of the set. However, it is used in many situations. Another important small point is that how we represent the membership of any element. The elements, they are represented with, with a Greek letter, which is known, an, known as epsilon, and in, in English, we say it is an element of, for example, if I say that uh, Al Baraka Bank Limited is a member or is an element of set B, it should be written like this. And this uh, sign that is um, epsilon or is a member of shows that it is a, it is a member or element of the set. Now, 
set notation is quite versatile and it allows us to specify ranges that we usually see in economics. In economics, we have a marginal propensity to consume, which is having a certain range that starts from zero and ends at one. So if I'm to write it in set notation, I'll use this way. It says that C is a set and MPC is that variable that we are talking about such that MPC is greater and equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So in this way, we can also specify ranges in, in, in the set notation for economic discussions. Set notation can also be used to specify relationships. Let's take some examples here. We have um, A, uh, which is a set of uh, South Asian countries, as you can see the list. And there is another set, which is, uh, which is including three of the South Asian countries, which is uh, represented with B. So, now if I am to relate these two sets, I can say that set A is greater and contains all the elements of B. So, uh, it, is, it, it is represented with, with a U, which is, you know, uh, lying on one side and the two legs of U are towards that set, which is the larger one. And the curly side of the U or the round side of the U is towards the set, which is the smaller set. Now, this smaller set is also known as subset. So, we can say that B is a subset of set A. Or we can read it like this, B is contained in A or A includes B. So, in this way, we can use set notation to represent relationships between two or more sets. So, now we know that set notation can be used uh, in a... In a in a certain set of ways to, to explain economic situations. Thank you.